Thank you for giving me a gem upon entry. Hi guys, welcome back. Scaling here and we are off for more of Spyro 3 Year of the Dragon Reignited. Possibly the finale, because we have only one level to go. The bonus level that we normally have at the end, after we do a normal, uh, any of the Spyro games, we had Nasty's Loot in Spyro 1, we had Dragon's Shores in Spyro 2, and even though that, yes, we had to beat the Sorceress in order to get the, the bonus egg, from Midnight Mountain, which is from money bags, as well as all of our gems back, eggs for sale. But we also had access to Sparks' final level, where he can now smash treasure chest and, in the original Spyro 3, warp with the guidebook, which we were able to do for the entire trilogy since number one. Didn't have to unlock it. So that's a thing. But we have all the trophies, all the stuff, all the all the eggs and the gems, but we now have one additional gem with 5,000 to grab with a secret egg to find. Yes, not only do we have more than 2,000 gems to collect, which is better than Nasty's loot, but we also have another egg. Another egg? How did we not know there was another egg? There's 149 eggs. Why is there just another egg? Maybe the egg from the sorceress doesn't count because she had that since a thousand years ago. Because if you remember from the cutscenes, that's what she used against one of the dragons that she banished. So that's a bit weird. Maybe that's why the dragons were trying to stop her. It's like, that's our egg. And then she, they just send off and it's like, oh, it's one egg. It, it will just have to bite the loss or something. But 149, couldn't have that. So maybe this secret egg is actually one of our eggs but we got it confused for one that you know the sorceress had i don't even know so yeah that, that's kind of a thing but yeah as soon as we enter sparks immediately grabbed a gem for us so i had to splice that in from the previous episode because you know i leave it running but oh bianca's here hey we finally made it spyro hunter was a little worried about you when you went off to fight the sorceress but i always knew you'd beat her uh yeah about that this place is where the sorceress kept all her treasure. But after she was defeated, a bunch of thieves came and stole it. If you can catch the thieves, you're more than welcome to keep the treasure. Oh, that sounds like a nice reward. We had that in Nasty's loot. We're doing it again here. But yeah, you guys were, do were like off elsewhere. Oh, by the way, Hunter is around here somewhere. He's been tinkering with one of his new toys all day and he wants to show it off. You should go see him. Oh no, that doesn't sound good. To be honest, that actually doesn't sound good because it's probably the most memorable but also the most annoying out of the stuff that we've got in this level. Yeah, there are gems strewn about but I don't think most of them are going to be in pots. So I don't think we're going to see Sparks's new ability that we got at the end of last episode, which is a shame. As I said before, you might want to actually go do uh, the, like defeat the Sorceress earlier than I did because I did it literally the last thing possible. Which, you know, makes a bit more sense, but, you know, in order to have access to Sparks' last ability, it might be better to do it, like, earlier. That saucer was flying low. I could have probably just jumped up and flamed it before I paid attention, but... Ah, we'll deal with him later. That's a sharp turn. I don't like that. So this guy's giving us the runaround. I'm actually not making much headway here. But yeah, it is possible to void out in this level, so don't do that. You can still li lose lives here, even though it's called the Super Bonus Round. It's a bit weird that the level's called the Super Bonus Round. It seems... I mean, it's like, yes, you beat the game, it's the Super Bonus Round. But at the same time, it's like, why does this level not have, like, a name? Like, an actual na location name in the rest of the areas? Because it's a bit weird. Whoa, hang on a minute. I thought I was quite deep in the snow there. It looked like it from the angle I was at. Yeah, it's probably nothing. Anyway... Basically, I just want to focus on getting these thieves for now, because if we walk around here, there are actually other doors that say that we need more gems than the maximum in order to, you know, let us through. And when I was saying about that five, uh, that, that extra five gem in Fireworks Factory that can happen, if you beat the level 100% before the patch came out, which we covered during Cloud Spires at the beginning of the game, so it didn't affect me, you would have five plus gems than what the game's actual maximum is, which we're going over the maximum of 15 thousand but you know with an extra five thousand gems that's twenty thousand gems we're going to be having that's quite a lot of gems so but yeah you would still have a plus five on top of that so yeah if you have that for some reason then you can pick it up if you want you if you want to have plus five i mean you know saying that it reminds me of when uh, my brother master aaron did his uh pretty well received actually um monsters inc scare island let's play and he somehow got an additional bronze medal. It's like, how do you do that? Oh dear. Thankfully they just 
magnetised to us, that's not a problem. Upon defeat! But yeah, he got like, there's supposed to be like 12 of each gem, and it, uh, 12 of each uh, medal, like, because there's about 12 levels, so you get like, one bronze, one silver, one gold medal from each level, and yeah, somehow he managed to get two bronzes in one level, because the game kind of like counted it twice. It's like he he got he got the silver medal first because to get the silver medal you just have to grab. Okay, this is bad. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. I couldn't get out of it. That's annoying. That should just be instant kill if that's gonna happen. But yeah, it's like he. I think it was Shady Oasis. No, Shady Oasis. Wait, is that the name of it? Was it Shady Oasis? No, that sounds like a spiral level. Well, it was the Oasis level. I'll tell you that, it was the Oasis level, and basically, he got, you're able to, if you're, if you're really good on platforming, you can actually get all the ten, um, monster tokens, earlier than you should be able to, wow, that was stupid of you, <laughs> and he's in the wall, <laughs> but yeah, um, that's because he poofed there, but yeah, it's like he was, he got, he managed to get it beforehand, and then when he, killed five of the eight, uh, or destroyed it, five of the eight nerves to get the bronze. The game gave him the bronze twice, like, it did the animation, like, oh yeah, you got bronze, but then it's like, oh yeah, you got bronze, again? It, like, just played the animation twice, and it actually counted it twice. So he did the level again properly, off screen, so that he could continue the let's play with, uh, you know, the actual requirements, and then he said that he would beat the game again with that file to see if he actually can beat the game with a 13 12 12 and he did so he had a 101 percent file which is insane it's like that that's like the only time that i've actually seen that happen on one thing scare island and this was the ps1 version by the way just so for clarification because there's a 64 version and there's also a ps2 slash pc version and yeah wait was there oh no I slipped off the side! Come on! That's another death. I can't do anything about that, because I'm nowhere near a ledge that I can actually climb up with. I should have made that jump, but I slipped off the edge. Can I just skip this this time? I've already died in this level. Nope, I can't skip it this time. I was able to do that in a... Was it Dynamines? Yeah, it was Dynamines. Probably Haunted Tomb as well. A bit odd that, I'm back at the beginning. Dang it! So yeah, as I'm doing right now, really, what I was talking about is I'm just chasing some of the thieves around, but I think I've got them all now, except for the ones that are flying around. But I've been able to open a couple of doors so far. So, might have to start actually doing these mini-games. Because where else are they going to be? I mean, we're not going to get any eggs, are we? We're just going to be doing it for, like, a mass payout of gems. So how many have we got right now? 16, 10, 10. 1, 10, excuse me. So we want to go for this door first. There we are. Oh, and Hunter's already been messing with his gadgets. What have you done? Hi, Spyro. Did you see Bianca? She was really worried about you when you went off to fight the sorceress. <laughs> it was pretty funny. She tries to play it cool, but she was scared stiff until you came back safe. That's what she said about you. I just finished fixing up an old submarine. Why don't you try taking it for a spin? Oh, we got another submarine, eh? Did that during Lost Fleet. Wanna take my sub for a spin? Why did you say the same thing twice? Great! Hop aboard! Fair enough. Wow. Well, oh yep, yeah, I don't even need to make the noise it does it for itself, I forgot about that. But yeah, we've actually just got this minigame again. We just gotta aim, wait for all the rings to go red, fire the missile, and there we are. I don't think we've actually got any uh gems to grab. The, the enemies themselves are holding the gems, so if we destroy them and just complete the minigame. We should have all the gems necessary, so we don't have to go searching around. I mean, at least this is water now, so it's like, if we do want to swim around by ourselves without the sub, it is actually doable. We don't have to use invincibility, which was still annoying and I actually died a bunch of times. I'm not having good luck on actually locking on at the moment. There we are, now that one. Thing is, this guy kind of cut me up. I'm surprised that the target didn't change because he was closer. There we are. I guess that wouldn't be fair because it's like, oh, I'm about to lock onto this guy so I can fire, and it's like, oh yeah, problems. Problem is, yeah, you can't really just spam because the, the, you ju it just won't hit them. It's, you have to actually lock on with all three rings. I was trying to spam there, but the first thing is, if you're spamming, you're still locking on, so that's pretty cool. So I appreciate that. So it's like, if you can pop off a shot, 
and that's appreciated. Oh, the problem is if you lose sight, it resets even if you've fired the missile. Because they have to curve inwards, if they hit a wall, it fails. Yeah, this ain't working. I'm going to hit him off. Hello! <laughs> Didn't like that U-turn, did you? Got him. Oh, we hit the wall! Come on! I just can't hold the lock on for long enough. This is actually annoying. Where is he? Wait, what was I locking onto? Ah, oh, that one. You know, I'll get this guy first. He seems easier. I Those three rings were red, and yet it didn't even lock on at all. What the hell? Right, this is the guy that's giving me the trouble, so now I should be able to go get him. Okay, I'm going to head him off again. There we are! No! Home in! What are you doing? They're all red again! The missile just went straight forward! Well, they were all red! What's going on here? Is this just because I'm firing at the wrong time, so they're just... No! The rings are going red, it's just not locking on. It's... I'm probably losing my lock on as soon as I press the button. So the missile doesn't actually follow after it's launched. There we are! I don't know if that was actually a glitch or not. But yeah, once we've killed them all, it doesn't actually kick us out, we have to leave ourselves. So just head back in. We should be good. Anything else in here? Nope, I think Sparks is telling us to leave. Wait, where'd he go? Wait. Where did you go? Where, where's he pointing? I can't actually see Sparks. He's just flying above me. What? Is he actually pointing in this area? Well, I don't know where he's pointing. He's pointing up in this area. What are you pointing at, boy? I'm actually confused because I'm pretty sure there isn't anything down here, but... No, he's pointing somewhere. What the hell are you pointing at? I don't actually know what you're pointing at. Okay, he's leading me around in circles. He points down, then he points up. I don't think I... I don't think he knows where he's pointing. That could be a glitch. Either that, or like in Cloud Spires... No, that was a glitch in Cloud Spires. That might actually be a glitch. He might be getting confused. If he points back to the door... No, he ain't. Okay, we're good. That was a bit weird. It's probably due to how the sub-areas are located in the main level, like, in the main level build, it's, like, secluded, so you can't see it. It's literally just a warp gate. That might be the issue. How did you get from there to there that quick? I didn't see you pass me by. Yeah, this one's the infamous one. This one's what causes a lot of issues. Check it out. This is the world's fastest turbo snowboard course. The local champions are the Sasquatch Six, a gang of yetis on souped-up snow discs. I bet that you could outrace the lot of them. If you win, we'll get a huge pile of treasure. If you lose, I'll have to slick down the whole course with my tongue. Yeah, this isn't easy, and it's actually a little bit more difficult in the reignited version due to, to, you guessed it, momentum. So, ready to race? Actually, no, not yet. Aw, oh, come on. You can take these guys. I can possibly, and I will eventually, but... Oh, by the way, you can just kill them now, but... Problem is, they'll respawn pretty much immediately. There we are. I don't want to do this yet, because we've got a bunch of stuff to grab. The problem is, we can't actually grab all of it as we're going. I mean, they expect you to actually go and grab all the gems as you're going through the course. Because you're not going to be able to, you know, climb all this on foot. But, you know, if you miss a couple of gems, that's going to be a bit of a problem. So I do want to do like a whole lap off of the board first to grab as much as possible. And then, you know, we'll have the race itself. So considering that, you know, these enemies pretty much are here to give you boost. Oh, which, you know, is another problem. I mean, my skills my, or my stunts may not actually register. That could be a problem. But yeah, because this is going to take a little bit of a while, I might actually just speed up trying to grab most of the gems possible. So, yeah, I'm going to do that. Oh, and by the way, if you can actually jump through these rings, you can get the rocket earlier, but if you fire it, because you're not supposed to be off foot, 
The rockets just kind of hover there and then they poof. I mean, you couldn't really see it from that angle, so... Oh, I couldn't hover to get that one. I'll get back up there in a minute. Saying that, the star boot, the, the blue rings don't actually boost you, as you saw there when I hopped through. It doesn't boost me. It's because I'm not flying. But the red stars still activate, which is a bit weird because, as you saw, I got the rocket, but because you're not supposed to use them when on foot, when I spat out the rocket, it didn't fly. And it causes a bit of an issue, so I'm going to grab this one again. There we are. I'll grab it again. Then I'll just fire it. And, yeah, it's not solid, it just barely moves. And then it just cancels out. It's a bit weird, I don't know why that happens. But anyway, I'm gonna speed up and try to grab all the gems that I can. And then obviously we're gonna have to just bite the bullet and grab as many as possible as we're going around on the skateboard during the race. Which is a free lap race, by the way, so that's gonna be fun. <laughs> Okay, so I can't get up there to get the last few gems on that final bit, so I'll have to go up that route during the race. But yeah, as you saw, those crabs are still programmed to actually attack you if you're off if you're off the board. But they don't actually do damage because Sparks has still got that star on him. And I did get hit by one of those guys, so it's time to do the race. I was trying to talk to him actually, game. So, ready to race? Yep. Right on! Just don't lose, or my tongue's gonna be a popsicle. Can't guarantee anything, buddy, but I will win eventually. Alright, so yeah, they cheat. They move pretty much immediately, so I want to do about that many backflips, and that guy already fell off, so that's great. But yeah, doing that many backflips to start off with gives you pretty much maximum boost. And here, I don't want to do any tricks. <coughs> Flame them and shit. Oh my god, what's going on? How do I do a pipe? Glitches to the end. What the hell? That's fair. That is just unbelievable. Come on now. What's going on? Hopefully I can remedy that. Ooh. No, that's it. I'm quitting already. That's fair. I'm not happy about that at all. Ah. That was unbelievable. I got stuck halfway against the wall, and then the game just decided to half-pipe me. At least when I fall off on the board, it doesn't take a life away from you, so that's nice. So we're sick right now. I didn't go up the slope properly. That's a bit weird. Come on, momentum. You should be helping me here. Stuff like that. <laughs> what the? What? I lost my board and then it spawned me in the pit. What's going on? Wow, game. We only just started and you're already bugging. Flipping hell. I've got no charge left. I know I haven't been doing stunts, but I'm just baffled by what's going on right now. Right, give me that. Nope, I jumped over too far and I didn't grab all the gems. That's great. Might have to speed up the race itself, but I don't really want to do that. But, if I start like that, what do I do? I mean, you can't just spawn... You can't respawn in front of me. That's not fair. Oh my god, what is going on with the physics? I hate momentum. I hate momentum. Can it not work? I don't know how I got a bit of boost there. Maybe it's because... Oh, it's like the Rhinox, if they kill the, the crabs, that actually helps me get boost. That's pretty nice, actually. Wait, I thought I grabbed a cannon, apparently. A, a cannon? I thought I grabbed a rocket, apparently I didn't. Well, I'm close enough to actually flame them, so that's cool. So what I try to tend to do is get my big boost, Use that for pretty much the entirety of the lap. And then get the big boost again, and just do that. And then I hold my lap like that, but I still need to get that one red gem. I mean, I didn't use my boost much there, but now if I do this... 
get up here, which now I'm in first place by the way. Do that, that put me back up to max because I didn't actually use a lot of my boost. Come over here. Should just be able to hold my boost for quite a while, knock him out. So now I'm in first place. Problem is they rubber band quite hard when you're in first place, so you just gotta keep up your speed. But I still need to get that one red gem. So I don't really want to do this again and go around an entire another lap just to get that red gem. So I do want to try and go over one of these ramps without boosting too much. So let's see if I just do that and then boost. Nope, that's not enough. Oh, I could just 180 and then fall in the pit. <laughs> That's what I told the game to do. Thanks for that. At least I'm still in first, so I might just bite the bullet for now and just try to get the win. Oh my lord, the camera. What happened there? What is this game doing to me? Well, now I've got no boost at all and he's ahead of me. Yep. Thank well done, moron. Just ram in behind me. I haven't had a chance to build up boost and he's leaving me behind. I don't even see him. Ah! That actually surged me forward. Don't like that. Okay, okay, okay. I'm making it back. I'm making it back. I mean, I don't mind if I lose at this point. I can get my uh, gem that I missed. I got the gem. I got the gem. But I lost the race. I got the gem, but I lost the race literally by one place. Because I wasn't allowed to do my four flips because it had to be weird. I think my tongue is frozen. You better not lose again. Oh, that were my fault. I wasn't allowed to flip. Okay. Good luck this time. I like how he actually talks like his voice is. He actually had to slide on his uh, tongue. Hey, look. He falls immediately into the pit. And yet he still spawns ahead of me. But he, wow, that guy just killed himself. And yet they're all still ahead of me. How does that work? They're crashing. They're falling into the pit. They should respawn behind. Not ahead. Because that's where the respawn point is. They're cheating. Alright, so get you. Right, now we're getting somewhere. Look at this. I think I'm almost about to take first place on the first lap. It's just I had to have a lot of jank to start off with. Which, you know, isn't exactly the best play, is it? Give me you. Right. So, I'm gonna jump up here. Okay, I didn't make it, so the camera can bug out again. Why is it that when I don't make that jump, the camera just has to t shit the bed? Seriously. It's actually really annoying because I can't build up my boost while I'm worrying about my position. Oh, for flip's sake, literally. I don't have my rocket either. You know what, I'm going to grab this rocket, I'm going to fire. Slow him down a bit. Or you could just hit the floor and not home in like you're supposed to. What the hell? These rockets are just as bad as green shells. You're supposed to home in, you dummy. My lord. Well, it's fine. There's only one person ahead of me. The other guys haven't caught up to me yet because I keep driving into the backside of me. So, that would have been how I got the red gem. Dang it. Okay, just spawn in. That's fair. I'm going to get it this time, though, because I'm back to normal speed. So I'll just do this, get maximum speed, and we're pretty much done for the rest of this race. Flame you. Get out of my way. Question is, where is the other guy? How far ahead is he? he shouldn't be that far ahead, surely. He's right there. Oh, no, this is bad. I need to be able to shoot him. There we are. That'll get him. Right. Get another rocket. Nope. Just sail above it. Right. I think I've nailed it. No! He respawned in front of me again! What the hell? That's not how you respawn! This game is cheating. I don't normally have this problem. I'm going to have to speed this up. Okay. Whoa, okay, never mind, why? This is, this game is breaking, this game is breaking. Quit the race, what the hell? Why was it just, what's going on here? What's going on here? Oh my god, it's the final episode, I was talking about this in the last episode. Look 
at this! Hopefully that means one person's down. So, right up. No, it's do says seven. What is this game at this point? Glitchy to the end, I, I swear. Never seen that happen with any of my mates play this. Oh, come on! Whoa! Why did I just jump afterwards? I did not press the jump button. What's going on? This game is breaking. Okay, I somehow made that. I don't know how I made that because I couldn't see what I was doing because the camera just decides to be weird when I'm doing that flip after lap one, which I don't understand. But I nailed it, so I got full recovery back. I don't know if I was speeding that up or... I was, that was just real time or something? I, I mean, this has been taking longer than it should have. I mean, I know that this is basically the hardest, but at this point it's been all for the wrong reasons. It's not supposed to be this janky. And that board at the beginning is still there, so I don't get it. Yeah, it's still there, look at that, that's not normal! Occasionally tap it every so often, get the bucket. What? I was fine! I was fine! I was fine, I still have my rocket. I'm getting mad. It's actually annoying. Oh yeah, I guess I didn't mention, when you get the blue stars, it doesn't add to your, uh... Oh no, wait, no, we talked about that before in Lost Fleet, didn't we? Yeah, it doesn't add to your actual boost, it just, uh... Gives you a boost. There we are, got it! Despite having issues. Yes! You schooled them like a bunch of frostbitten, flat-footed, molasses-eating, lead-pants-wearing, cross-eyed glacier trolls riding slabs of plywood with sandpaper on the bottom! Yeah, we want some shiny stuff, too. Try saying that five times fast. The amount of glitches I have seen, not just momentum base, but that sled alone. All the races were still there, but one of the sleds just decided to not despawn. It was just there throughout that entire last attempt of the race. That's insanity. And I can't move during this, by the way. I, my control is just rumbling. Seriously, though, why was it that bad? Oh, and by the way, now that there's actually a skateboard hologram there, so you can do this whenever you want. In case if you know you were missing any of the gems, which thankfully I'm not because Sparks tend me to leave, and I will gladly take my leave, because screw that minigame! <laughs> Glitching to the end, I swear. It, it, I was hoping that this would be like the actual time where the game won't bug out. Because you know, well, I knew it, I was going to have problems with momentum, but not like the Yetis actually flat out not like respawning ahead of where they're supposed to be, or just, you know, getting stuck, or not despawning properly. It, just what? I am so baffled. Yep, this door's now open, and now we're able to actually take to the skies with a combo power-up. So we can actually chase these guys down and smash them. Just, you know, don't go too far, because then you'll just drop like a stone. Now, this power-up lasts for quite a while. We've got seven flying saucers to shoot down. Once we take them all out, we'll get all the gems, literally all the gems up to this point, and then we'll finally be able to go for the final door. Because as I said, there's only there's only 5,000 gems in the level. That means the new maximum is two is well 20,000 effectively. What's up here? Oh, it's just somewhere that you would pass through. Fair enough. Look, we've already been flying for a little bit already. Wow, I'm getting stuck in here. We've been flying around for a bit already. And yet, a bar has barely gone down. Oh, oh wow, I actually collided with his uh, debris. Pfft. That shouldn't be a thing, but luckily I can recover out of it, so that's fine. That should have been a nail. Twice over. Oh, stop. Stop bonking! I'm actually trying to gather height! Thank you. That was annoying. I was actually trying to go back in a flight so I wouldn't fall, but I just kept on bonking. Come on, there we are. Keep bonking into their debris, it's actually annoying as well. Because I don't want to fall, but when I try to like get back in a flight, I just bonk again. 
So I just keep losing height. Where's the last one? I know he flies around quite far. No, actually, no. One of them is quite low. That's the one I'm missing. Where are you? Where are you? Wait, did I just see him? Did I get the low one already? I thought... Hang on. Let's fly down here. Oh, wait. I saw him behind me. I saw him behind me. What's the button? That's the button. I thought I saw a shadow. When I was passing by Bianca, I saw a shadow, and I thought that was the saucer. <laughs> I guess it wasn't, because I can't actually find this guy for the life of me. It's always the last one that gives you trouble, isn't it? Oh, I'm going to redo, and then I'm going to cut until I find him. Well, I wasn't actually on the map for a second there, and I found him! Didn't have to cut. I just realised I was off the map, and I was like, I'm going a bit too far for the game to allow me to go do that. Come back here, you. Must have already taken out the low one. And that should be the last of the gems. Yes, it was. And with that, the final door opens. 100% complete. Not true. What about the egg? Stop lying to me, game. Even though it does say 117%, you don't actually need to get the last egg to be 117% done. That last egg does not add up to the percentage. Bit of that. The gems do, but the egg don't. But yes, it's time to actually go through the final door. It's a rematch! She did live, we saw that in a cutscene. I don't know how she did it, Spyro, but the sorceress must have survived that last battle. She's been waiting here all this time, saving up her magic to destroy you. Your best chance at defeating her is my flying saucer. I've cast some spells to give it extra firepower and unlimited flying time. But the rest is up to you. You've come this far, Spyro. I know you can beat her. Yep, it's literally just a shoot down. It's a dog fight. Or a dragon fight in this case. We have infinite ammo, but we have only the health that we're provided with. All you gotta do is shoot her down. She'll be on the run, laying out mines and firing at you. If we can take her down, we get the final egg, and that is it for Spyro 3. I took that to the face. If you need a dodge, just fly quite high. You know when she's going to fire, because she'll turn around for a second. Like that. So then we just want to, you know, do a little bit of a slalom there. I didn't even see where she was. I just saw a shot being fired at my face. I'm surprised I dodged it, to be honest. There we are. Nailing her right now. Right, I'm just going to go this way. There we are. Where is she? There you are. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, I dodged that. It's basically just, like... The final phase of Recto's battle, funnily enough. But that's really the only thing about it. You just basically have a rematch with the sorceress. And this is purple. Wow, I didn't even see her, see myself hitting her. But there we are. She's gone. And this is purple ooze. You're not getting out of that one. You're not living forever. In fact, you're now dead. Or is she really? That looked a bit odd. But we have our final double egg. Didn't all the eggs already hatch? Why are we watching them actually hatch now? Aww. This is actually pretty adorable and cute. That's just rude. You're a gassy one, aren't you? And Spyro's fine with it. Yeah, that's actually how they end off the trilogy. You, you know what? This is when Insomniac were like, we've kind of run out of ideas. We didn't know how to end off the final game after, in, after the super bonus round. And we don't really have any ideas for Spyro. So now we're just going to move on to Ratchet and Clank. Because, you know, a person on all, a character on all fours can do less than a person on two legs that can grip stuff. And that's when, you know, the Spyro was let go from Insomniac and Activision had to find other publishers like Universal and 
voice for Bob. So that's a thing. But yeah, that is the entirety of the Spyro 3 Year of the Dragon on the Reunited Trilogy. Yes, we've already gone through the credits we've, in the last episode we talked, but this is pretty much what I'm going to be talking about the trilogy as a whole. Because, you know, we're not going to see the credits again because I don't have any skill points to get, don't have any uh, trophies to get, I've got all three Platinums. So, the bonus ep yeah, so what you can expect, I guess, talking about what's going to be happening from now onwards, because we are done with all three games. That, that is it. We've done Spyro 1, 120%. Spyro 2, 100%. Spyro 3, 117%. All done with all trophies, all skill points from the Reunited Trilogy, as well as from the originals. But we have two bonus episodes to cover. The first bonus episode, of course, is the Spyro 3 Reunited version, which is covering any cheats that are exclusive to the original Spyro 3, the Reunited Spyro 3, and Spyro 3 re Remake only, not the trilogy as a whole, I'll get to that. As well as the art gallery, the PS4 menu theme that I don't think has an Xbox One equivalent. I, I, I'm a bit ignorant on that because I don't have an Xbox One, but that seems to be a PS4 thing anyway. And uh, yeah, because you know I don't have to actually go and get any trophies because pretty much all of them were easily obtainable just by doing 117%, well 100% because you don't get anything afterwards. Didn't really have to go out of my way to go out and get any trophies. They were pretty much on the way. Like, most of them were like, beat the boss, or free this guy, or get in the next hub world. It was like, oh, you know, they're a little bit more, you know, obvious. I mean, okay, maybe the one, for example, in Desert Ruins, getting the two lives, but they were pretty much next to, like, eggs or gems, so why would I ignore them? They're pretty much in the way of 100%, or next to what would give me 100%. So, of course, I would smash them. So... Yeah, stuff like that. You know, didn't really have to go out my way much. I mean, maybe Lost Fleet shooting all the vultures instead of, you know, just shooting the rocks when I was closer. But, you know, every time you shoot a rock, if you miss, you have to go grab another rock and then aim again. The, the cannons, you can just keep spamming until you get it. So the cannons are still the best way to do it, and that's what the trophy wanted you to do. So getting the achievements along the way were pretty much easier in comparison to uh, Spyro 2, where, you know, some of the skill points, as well as the trophies, were actually easier after you beat the game, and get the permanent super flame. So, that's a thing. And Sparrow 1, some of them actually required you to play a level entirely differently, not kill a single fodder by accident, or get through out being hit, which was also a Sparrow 2 uh, thing when it came to achievements. That was a thing. But, the whole entire tr trilogy as a whole. Pretty much some of the same things that I've said already about Sparrow 3 Reignited, is that Sparrow 1, Reunited had pretty much all of the polish. I mean, it's the first game. Of course, that's going to get the most polish. They probably spent the most time doing that, but then they didn't have as much time doing the next two games, Spyro 2 and Spyro 3 Reignited. So they got lost, less polish, and they also had less time because they spent so much time perfecting Spyro 1. Because when we did Spyro 1, the only glitches that we tended to bump into were Sparks wasn't grabbing a couple of gems. But that was a thing throughout the entire trilogy. And that never happened in the original PS1 releases. So it, that's a baffling thing in itself. Sometimes grabbing health from fodder is not in, in, as immediate as I remember. I mean, especially in the boss fights. I had to keep running back. If I missed them with the charge, which... Sparks would automatically grab them. I would have to flame because I'm trying to hit the fodder because I need the health, but then the, the health just lingers and I don't get the health. And that caused me to pretty much double back on myself back into danger just to heal, which kind of defeats the purpose of healing. So that was a problem I had. And yeah, it's like the, the, the glitches of Spyro 3 were just too numerous. Well, pretty much up to the halfway point, it was nothing but non-stop glitches every episode, even if it was very minute, or it was like just a recurring thing, like with Sparks not grabbing a gem. But near the end, it was actually causing me to die, because, I mean, like I said in the last episode during the credits, just that, like, in Dino Mines, I destroyed that one cactus, the gem's there. Sparks don't pick it up, I try to grab it, but then I accidentally walk off the side, because I... Uh, that one which was my fault, but I shouldn't have had to grab it myself if Sparks did his job. But then after I respawned, destroyed the cactus again to try and get the gem again, and then Sparks just grabs it. And I'm like, what? That never happened before. Normally, if you ignore a gem, you always ignore the gem. Why only now did you decide to grab it after I died? That was like out of spite. It's like the game was teasing me at that point. 
and I don't know why that Spyro 3 Reignited was such a, you know, such a glitchy mess. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's too functional, it's too playable, all three of the Reignited games, of the yeah, all the three re remakes are playable, but the polish did decrease as we went, and that kind of sours my enjoyment. I mean, it did while I was recording, it's like... I mean, if I was playing it by myself, I mean, maybe I didn't know, I wouldn't have noticed them that much, but this also gives me, like, a way to, like, tell you my feelings. I mean, we went, we went back and forth throughout the entire trilogy, mostly in Spyro 2 and 3, showing the original footage in comparison to, like, because it, it, there's such a drastic change in terms of, like, voice acting or character design, or even gameplay mechanics and controls, especially with Agent 9, but... Because Agent 9, wow, that, that was like, Agent 9's just the best in the Reignited trilogy. He's got, he, the, the original release doesn't hold a candle. The voice acting is pretty much the same voice actor, but he has a little bit more energy, even though it's not delivered exactly the same. People could be on and off about that. But his design's better, he's better animated, and his controls are better. You can't really beat it, so... Agent Nine was good. Hunter, I mean, his mini games were a little bit janky, but again, that's mostly because of momentum. However, Honey Speedway... That was more balanced, I, I approve. The momentum-based physics caused a lot of problems with treetops, especially treetops because I lost a lot of lives, which is ironic because in the original, that could eat up your lives, but this time it was for the wrong reasons because if I didn't keep scuffing the walls, I would have actually been making the jumps because that slowed me down just enough that I wasn't making the jumps even though I was technically at max speed because the effect was there, but you could see what happened when like we were running into the walls or sliding into the walls of the uh, speedways or on the slides in the last in uh, Haunted Tomb and Crystal Island, in Spyro 3 during Midnight Marion. Sparks just not picking up gems again. I just want to keep mentioning that because I mean the first instance we had that was um, Peacekeepers, like the second hub world of Spyro One, reignited, but it, it carried on and it just got worse. It happened throughout the entire trilogy, and I'm like, why? And once again, saying how many names are on screen here. There was a lot of people. I mean, there probably are duplicates because they're in different uh, sections. Like, they may have multitasked. But at the same time, it's like... The the, the game... that They put their heart and soul into this game. I, I approve, but at the I commend them. But at the same time, they were rushed. Because Activision wanted the game out at a certain date. Which I could understand. It was the 20th anniversary. They wanted to get the game out on that date. But, you know, they had to delay it for another two months. And even then... A patch came out literally six months later, and that was when we just started Spyro 3 Reunited. Uh, that was during Cloud Spires, which, to be honest, there isn't much to talk about Cloud Spires. It's just platforms above the clouds. What is there to say? You got a happy cloud. Sun seeds. I mean, the, the sub areas are more memorable than the level itself. But that's what makes the level memorable. And I did give my feedback on those bits when I did. But we were talking about the, the patch at that point, which added subtitles, gave you the option to turn off the motion blur, which... Funnily enough, actually, people kept the motion blur, which we did, because the, the frame rate being a 30 is not a stable 30. It looks really choppy without the motion blur. You kind of need it. So, eh, it's not as sharp, but, you know, the graphics still look absolutely amazing. And that's why the motion blur, uh, the motion graphics artist, there we are, the motion blur was necessary. Um, still, it's a bit of a shame that they couldn't push 60. I mean, he marks free. That can do 60 frames, and there's so much special effects going on there. But I'm guessing the characters don't have that many polygons, but their entire mouths are rendered, there's teeth rendered, I guess. Dragons just have more polygons, I guess? Or maybe the models are just bigger? And But we obviously can't tell because it's at a certain camera angle and everything's at a certain scale, so we don't, you can't tell. I'm not too sure. I don't know why the game is like a, a not very stable furry. I mean, throughout the entire game, I could actually see it chug a bit. I could see it drop. I mean, it tries to keep that 30, it like skips a few frames if it ain't, but it still tries to keep that consistent 30, but even though it can't, and that's a little bit baffling. I wanted to wait until the Reignited trilogy, if there was a Reignited trilogy at the time, to come out, because when Crash was get, getting his first games, his first, the first three games remade, I assumed that Spyro was going to get a remake as well, a load of people did. 
Because, I mean, whatever Crash does, Spyro will eventually do, or the other way round. I mean, Skylanders was out for god knows how long, and Crash came in in, like, literally the last one. Even Don in Donkey Kong and Bowser got in on that before Spyro. Oh, sp before Crash, even. But Crash came in at the time during Skylanders because his remake was coming out. So it was like, here, have this. And then you have, like, Spyro and Crash in the same game for so long since. But then it's like Crash is getting his original games remade. Where's Spyro? Bang. After a while, we get Spyro. It's not really a bang, but a bang happened nevertheless. Talked about that during the, the last episode's credits. Link of the card again, I guess. Um, yeah, it's a big debacle when, when it was revealed. So it's like, uh, the announcement that there is no announcement or something. Or the announcement isn't exactly what we were talking about. Or the announcement is that we're going to make an announcement. And that was like, well, what's the point of that? You might as well just said nothing. And then during the stream, you said there was going to be an announcement. And then post that afterwards. It just didn't make sense. So, and not only that, but the, let's admit, admit, the gameplay that during that Crash stream was a bit not the best. It was very... I don't, I don't want to, like, sound mean. It was just, like, it just made you think why a lot of people were like that. And, again, I don't like talking smack. Especially since, you know, Activision hired these guys to do this. And they poured their heart and soul into it. They did their job. But they were also rushed. And I can understand, you got to meet deadlines. But, you know, rushing something is never good. I mean... Despite, you know, some issues with what Shigeru Miyamoto has uh, put out as well, like Star Fox Zero, no one liked the controls, no one wanted to use the gamepad, which, by the way, you can still technically use a pro controller, so that's not an excuse. It was developed with the gamepad in mind, and you're still expected to use the gamepad. Fair enough. But he always said that a rushed game will not always be good, but a, a delayed game will always be good, or something along those lines. But <clears throat> it just, just makes you wonder. Apparently, Toys of Bob had to go to Activision twice to say, we need more time, we need to delay the release. And they had, and only on the second attempt did Activision allow them to delay it, but by only two months, and that was it. I mean, when the, the update came out, the patch came out, it also half, it like, compressed the game a bit more, but without affecting load time, it's like, it went from like, 65.5 gig to 36.3 gig. I mean, I don't know if that caused any more glitches to happen, but they said they also fixed glitches, which are the more game-breaking glitches. Like I said, the missing gem from Fireworks Factory in the remake, they fixed that, but if you had already grabbed all the gems before the patch, it would respawn that gem even if you've already collected it, so then you would have a plus five. So, fixing a glitch made a new glitch. It's... how do you do that? It's like if the game already says that, oh, you've already grabbed that gem, that gem's been flagged, then don't renew the flag, but, because, like, if the gem wasn't collected because it was gone, then just respawn it where it should, or give it back to the enemy. It shouldn't just be sitting there, because my brother got affected by that, Slayer Chondrite got affected by that, I even showed the footage, but, there you go. So, yeah, that's, that's the thing. So, since we're at the, coming up to the end of these credits... As I said, we've got two more bonus episodes to do. I've already talked about the bonus episode for Spyro 3, but for the, the other bonus episode, that's going to be covering the trilogy, both the original and the remake, the Reunite trilogy, as a whole. We're going to be covering all the cheats that are usable throughout the three games. That's why I haven't covered some of them, like Big Head Mode or 2D, or the different colours or the shades. Yep, no, just a little bit of spoilers for you right there. But that... They're usable throughout the entire trilogy in the originals, for the most part, as well as some of them in... Well, they all work with different codes in the Reignited trilogy, and they carry over, like, if you change your colour from Spyro 1 Reignited, that's where you'll be in Spyro 3 Reignited, so that's pretty cool as well. But obviously the exclusive ones for set games, like I did with Spyro 2, will be for Spyro 3's bonus episode, but for the whole entire trilogy, we'll cover that, as well as all of the... Uh, PS4 menu themes, including the additional one that came out after the release, which I think was also out after the patch, because I even mentioned that during uh, one of the videos from before. Again, I'm talking about quality assurance and stuff, and then they appear on the screen, which makes me feel bad, but at the same time, so many people, either, you know, you would think that things couldn't be missed, but at the... There's so many people, there may be some miscommunication and things might have got lost in, like, transit or something. 
or they just didn't have time to patch them up. But games can be patched these days. You can fix it and make it better. And maybe that's why there hasn't been a Switch version. Because people still want a Switch version. People would love to play it on the go like they could with the original trilogy on the PSP through the PSN. So that would be cool. Or, you know, play it on the PS3 with PSP Remote Play. That's a thing, but why would you do that? Just put it on the system itself if you have the memory. But yeah, that was like an official way you could play the original Spyro Trilogy on the go. But people want the new version on the go, and the Switch would be perfect for that. But I think they're holding that off for at least a year, just like they did with Crash Bandicoot, so it doesn't come out for other systems, like it did for exclusive PS4, then it came out for Xbox One and Switch. Maybe they're not releasing it on the Switch until they actually have all the patches done, so they have like a definitive version on cartridge for the system. And since it's like 36.2, maybe they, if they like reduce like certain things, they could probably fit it onto a 32 gigabyte cartridge, so that all three games are on the cartridge. You can sell it physically, make people happy for that. People will buy it. You won't be out of pocket. I should hope not, and everyone will be satisfied, and it won't be buggy. So. Just saying that. Not really much else to say there, really. So, yeah. I wanted to wait until the Reunited Trilogy because I've wanted to cover these games for a while. We've done them back to back to back. I'm not doing Spyro 4 for now because I'm kind of burnt out on Spyro now. Literally. Pun intended. So that's a thing. But yeah. Uh, so, what else there? I talked about the graphics. Amazing. The, the, uh, the motion blur. That was a bit of a controversial thing, but now we can see why since you can now turn it off. Subtitles. They're now added, so that's not an issue. Um, the controls, when you're not dashing or swimming or on a skateboard, they're pretty much quite tight, but as soon as, you know, you have to build up the speed, the momentum, base physics kick into high gear and it messes you up and that's the problem. But other than that, the controls, they're pretty much like modernised. It brings all three of these classic games to modern systems so that people can like enjoy them at, like like on the latest hardware so you don't have to like hunt down a PS1 or a PSP with an account and download them through a PS3 or do it through a PS3 or emulate. These guys are awesome and you know what I'm gonna have to say uh, see you guys uh, in the next episode for when we actually uh, you know do the uh, bonus episode because I've got pretty much nothing else to say at this point because there's literally nothing else for us to do once we return to the game. So with that, see you guys next time.